Hello again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC and today I'm going to try and make just a short video. I don't want to take up too much of your time because this is just going to be an opinion piece anyway. But there's an awful lot going on. And one of the things I want to talk about is keeping an eye on the economy. Okay, I really think that there is a decent potential uh, could be downgraded to a decent chance, but I, I think we've, at least in my opinion, have upgraded things to a potential. Now, what am I talking about? Well, there has been all the reports that uh, since the start of the Russia-Ukraine thing, that uh, the different banks, mainly U.S., has frozen the assets and finances uh, of different U.S. and allied countries of Russia. Now, these are frozen. Now, as far as, uh, to my knowledge, perfectly legal to do. The only thing is, though, is there seems to be talks of unfreezing them and giving them to Ukraine. Now, that's bad, okay? Let me explain myself as to why. Now, I know that this video is not going to be for everybody. I'm giving you a fair warning now. If it's not for you, no big deal. No hard feelings. Uh, check me out in my next video. If you uh, want to, stay tuned because this, this might be a little uh, bit of a, a something to think about. So if they unfreeze this and hand it over to Ukraine, that would be bad in my opinion because that would signal to a lot of countries that already have a strained relationship. So think of things like China. China and Russia's, or China and the US, rather, doesn't have the best relationship at the moment. China has a lot of stake right now in the US economy. Now, if I was China and I could sit back and watch that the US for any, any moment, they can just snap their fingers and all of my assets and, and finances could be not only frozen, but could be confiscated, then that takes my confidence away. Why would I put it there? If there's a, a even just a, a small chance of it happening, why would I do that? You don't do it. You know, most of you are my age or even older. And so when you're talking about your retirement, your 401k, things like that, you're not in that high risk category. Yeah, maybe back when you were 20 or whatever, you could you could high risk some things, but we're older now and we don't want a whole bunch of high risk. And so for China or some of these other places that have a lot of capital and different investments in the United States, why would you take a high risk? You could do other things. Now, here's one of the big things too, because it's not just China. There's a lot of countries, even ones that we are friendly with would you do that with your friend it'd have to be a pretty darn good friend for you to trust billions if not trillions of dollars of finances and assets so i know there's a lot of my friends they're good friends i'll pick up the phone i'll answer their text heck they can come over and i'll cook them a dinner it's it's completely fine uh, there's some of them, you know, that, um, they're friends. I'll call them friends. I'll help them out when they need it, but I'm not letting them borrow my lawnmower. <laughs> you know, there's different stages of friends. And just because we call different countries, our, our friend or our ally doesn't mean that they're all on the same level. Some of them are better allies than others. Some of them are still building trust or whatnot, but, uh, you know, think of it like Japan. Japan's one of our biggest, uh, holders of debt. What happens if they go, whoa, we don't want your debt no more. You know, you could take and freeze all of our stuff. We tuck and bought all of your debt. What happens if you freeze all of our assets and then we're stuck holding the bag? It makes a lot of people question things. Now, yes, I know this is all hypothetical because it, the U.S. has not done it. It's just being talked about. But the thing is, is talking about it is almost as dangerous because it goes from a small chance and really raises it from a chance to being almost probable. So we have to watch this very closely. Now, why is that important? Well, the economy is extremely important. You got to think about things. In the economy, if you're making $20 an hour, okay, 
Now, I know that some of you going, I wish I'll make $20 an hour. And I know there's a few of other you that go, I don't get out of bed for, you know, that little bit of money. Okay. I, I know I get, it. uh, bear with me. We make $20 an hour. Okay. So if you make $20 an hour, you have to look at it instead of money, look at it as time for one hour of your time. I will hand you a $20 bill. So when you go out to the store and you go, I want to buy a steak. Well, you got to feed your family. And so steak is, let's go for the sake of argument that they're $10 a steak. Okay. They're on sale or whatever. All right. Well, there's three of you. So that's $30. Okay. Well, you make 20 an hour. So that means that you have to give me an hour and a half of your time. We're not talking pieces of paper no more. We're talking time. We're trading time. You have to give me an hour and a half of your life. And I'll hand you three pieces of steak. Is that fair? You know, some of you go, yeah, that's, that's very fair. Some of you going, uh, uh, no, no. Uh, and you got to look at it through everything, especially with major purchases. You make $20 an hour. Okay. I'm going to go out and buy a, a $10,000 automobile. Do you know how many hours of your life that is in order to acquire that vehicle? It's an awful lot. Then you got to think too. That full $20 isn't going to that. You got to pay taxes on it. You got to pay maintenance on it. You got to put fuel in it. You got to, you know, tag it, title it, do all that stuff. So it's even more hours because it's not just one and done. You got to do all the things in between there and afterwards. So the economy, when it comes into this, is the value of the dollar. Now, different things happen to make the dollar go up and down and Hopefully, I'm going to actually get a, a person that is like an economist that can speak much more intelligently than I am. So we're going to dumb this down to uh, a, a lower level. So hopefully, we can all be on the same page for this. Now, the value of the dollar is important, and there's a lot of things that drive it. But one of the things that you want to consider, which, uh, side note, I go on and I check the value of the dollar every day. I want to know where it's going. Is it going up? Is it going down? And Right now, at least uh, the when I checked it today, I don't know when this video will come out. It's been on a, a very kind of steady decrease. I think it was at like 101 point something, which if you really want to know in that kind of dumbed down sense, if you go look at it and it says like 101 point whatever, move that decimal point over because that's how you will kind of see it in the, the really uh, downgraded version. So that dollar is worth, you know, a dollar one right now. Now I've seen it in good times where it's been up there to a dollar, whatever, 30 or whatever. And back in 2008, I mean, it was worth like 77 cents. You know, that's, that's all the dollar was technically worth. And that's where your inflation comes in. So you've got to remember something is only as valuable as somebody's willing to pay for it. You can put whatever you want. You can take this pen and you can put a price tag of a dollar on there. Now, will somebody buy it? No, in this day and age, probably not. Will you put a penny on this? Will somebody buy it? Yes, probably a bunch of people would pay a penny for a working pen. Could you put a hundred dollars on it? Yeah, it's free country. You can put whatever you want on it. You can put a million dollars for this pen. It's fine. Point is, is you can ask whatever you want. It all comes down to supply and demand as well as inflation. So to bring this back full circle, when you have supply and demand, okay, if there is five pens on this desk and you need a pen, but 10 other people need a pen as well, I can make the price go up because I have more demand than I have supply. I mean, some of you aren't getting a pen. Now, if I have a hundred pens and you're the only one that wants a pen, well, I have a bunch of supply, but I don't have any demand. You can almost tell me what you're willing to pay for it because I'm not really going to sell any pens. So usually businesses try to float that middle area. They want to keep a decent supply or decent demand keeps the prices to where everybody's kind of happy. You're paying where you feel comfortable that it's a good deal. The company is still being profitable and making some money. So they're good. And uh, that's the way an economy should work. Now, 
inflation comes in. So this pen, let's say it's worth a dollar and everybody's okay with it being worth a dollar. The company's worth okay with it being a dollar. Everybody seems to be happy on both sides. Well, with inflation, now this is a dollar ten. You go, well, what's ten cents? Well, no one cares. Well, the thing is, is the inflation went up ten cents. The company, at the end of the day, because of the way that their wages and, and the materials and the cost of electricity and on all the insurance, and everything, at the end of the day, they're still profiting right about the same. You, however, paid 10 more cents. So it actually goes against you because a company will mark up for inflation. You don't get to mark down. You don't get to draw more out of your paycheck for inflation. So inflation hurts the consumer. Now that we can get into a whole big economic lessons, but we're going to get out of that. So let's bring this back to where we're going to go with this. So really what I want to do is going to be bricks. Okay. Now bricks has the potential in the future. Now, I don't know if it's going to be in the immediate near future, or if this is going to be kind of like a eight to 10 year out thing, but they have the potential to take over the dollar. Now, will they? I don't think so. Could they? Yeah, I think, I think it's a possibility. It very well is. What do I think is more likely to happen? I think digital currency is. Now, we can get into a whole huge episode, maybe even a mini-series on digital currency and why I believe, in my opinion, that's a really bad idea. But I want you, at least for this, I want you to kind of do some prepping homework. If you already watched what's going on in the economy, good for you, okay? As a prepper, you need to prepare. And part of being prepared is to look at everything. So that's why we do a, a daily news headlines, if I can speak English today. Uh, and then we need to also keep an eye on the economy, okay? Every day, for the most part, you do some sort of a transaction. If you don't, lucky you. I would say at least once a week, every single one of you that watches this once a week pays some sort of a bill. You go get gas, you you buy a stamp. Um, look how old I am, buy a stamp. Ooh, when's the last time one of you bought a stamp, okay? <laughs> um, but you, you did something. Usually you did something. So you are part of the economy. Even if you're drawing a check and, and you only go out once a month and do all your stuff once a month, okay, you, you're doing money exchanges. And I, I, there's a whole bunch of this that we could really dive deep into. And this might be just a teaser video to it. I need to bring some people on so that way I can better explain this. We can look at it from different angles. We can look at it from an economy point of view, as a small business point of view, precious metals, uh, all, all sorts of different things. Um, now, I was re recently listening to a podcast, and uh, they were talking about the WEF and the famous line of you will own nothing and be happy. And the one guy on there was sitting there laughing going, you know, no, no, if it ever comes down to that, you know, the people will revolt, they won't stand for it and all that. And the other guy's dying laughing at him. And he's going, what's so funny? You know, he goes, I, I truly believe that. And he goes, dude, it's been like that forever now. And he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, you don't own anything. He goes, well, sure I do. He goes, name one thing you own. He goes, you don't. If you want to know if you own something, stop making payment on it. If you want to, if you want to, if you have the title to your house, then don't make the, the taxes. Don't pay the taxes on it. If you have the title to your car, don't go get it re-registered. There's a bunch of those that you own something. Mm. You made a very good argument on that uh, because you work all your life you stay out of trouble. You keep your nose clean. You do your, your due diligence. You pay your taxes. Yeah, you do all your stuff. You're a good, decent human being. You pay off your car note. You pay off your house loan. You have a piece of property. You don't bother anybody. You help out your neighbors. You're a good citizen. The community knows you and loves you. And uh, one day you go, I'm not going to pay that stuff. 
not going to be very long until men with guns come on your property, seize everything that you have, put handcuffs on you, and haul you off to a cage. I, I see his point. We are basically conditioned to where you already own nothing. Most of us are, are decently happy. Um, I mean, before I listened to that podcast, I never saw it in that light. I was pretty happy. Um, I mean, I'm still kind of happy. I'm thankful for everything that I've got. But uh, yeah, I can I can see where he's going with that, and I see his point. Do I agree with it? To a certain extent, yeah, I do. I, I, definitely, it's a little bit of an eye-opener, but um, yeah, yeah. So, you know what? We've gone on long enough on this one. Uh, we'll probably end up coming back and touching on this because I need to bring some more people on so that way we can really get into this. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Did, uh, did I explain it well enough? You have something to add, something to take away. Uh, you can disagree with me, agree with me. Everything's cool as long as you're an adult about it. You can disagree with people in the chat. It's okay to debate and have dialogue with another adult. Don't be a jerk about it, okay? It's one thing I will not tolerate or stand for on any of our, our stuff on this page. We don't name call. We don't do any of that, that stuff. If you want to say, hey, I, I disagree with you, great. You disagree. That's okay. It's okay. So, all right, guys, stay tuned. There's definitely more information to come. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for dropping by. If you're not new here, you know what we're getting ready to do. Say it with me now. Above everything else, remain united because we're all prepping in this together.